Handling residents and patients in the healthcare setting has historically resulted in costly and painful injury to employees. Years ago, King implemented a no-lift program that instituted the use of mechanical lifting devices when lifting or transferring residents. The program drastically reduced the frequency and severity of injuries due to lifting or transferring the people we serve. Still, injuries continue to occur when workers reposition residents in bed or a chair and when manual transfers are performed from bed to chair and wheelchair to toilet. King responded with the STAR program, Safe Transfers and Repositioning. This video is a tutorial aimed at helping you provide employee training and orientation on the proper and safe techniques of transferring and repositioning residents. Whenever possible, hold the training session in an empty residence room in order to better replicate working conditions employees will face. Provide a gate transfer belt, an adjustable bed, chair, toileting facilities, and a wheelchair for the training. Make a copy of the training module for each employee. Review the text with employees, allowing for discussion and questions. Demonstrate each transferring technique for the class using an employee to act the role of the resident. Allow employees to demonstrate proficiency for each transfer technique. Document the teachback. Documentation should be dated and signed by the instructor and the employee and placed in their file. Retraining is desired if the employee does not demonstrate proficiency, is observed not practicing safe transferring techniques with residents, has reported an injury while repositioning, moving, or transferring a resident. Use a team. Think team. Two are always better than one. When repositioning a resident, it is always best to get help. Using team techniques is safer for the caregiver and healthier for the resident. In the following segment, we will be demonstrating two-person assist techniques. We will often have the need to reposition a resident when he or she is in bed. Moving a resident up when settled to the end of the bed, turning a resident over, and sitting a resident to the side of the bed are tasks that are performed on a regular basis. It is important to use good body mechanics, safe postures, and procedures as you perform these tasks. Remember, you should use a mechanical lift if a second person is unavailable. Brittany, we're going to scoot you up in bed. Place a pillow between the resident's head and the headboard. Lay the pillow flat against the headboard. This provides a safety pillow and protects the resident from bumping their head during transfer. Raise the bed to a safe working height. Use two people and a draw sheet. An incontinence pad or a combination of the two may be used. We're going to have you help us by bending your knees up and having you push, okay? Ask the resident to assist if possible by bending their knees. If the resident has lower body strength, they may assist in the transfer by pressing down with their legs. By raising the knees alone, you can reduce the weight of the transfer by as much as one-third. Raising the knees reduces the body weight that is moved across the mattress. We're going to cross your arms. Assist the resident in placing their arms and hands over their chest. Roll the draw sheet snugly to the resident and grip with a palm down posture. This keeps your wrist in neutral and provides a strong grip. Lean in the direction of the move. Lift and shift the resident up on the count of one, two, and three. Always allow for a count before repositioning. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Push. 
counting provides a smooth, safe start for the caregivers and a prompt for the resident. Use your legs and body weight in the direction of the move. Lower the bed to resident care plan height. Brittany, we're going to roll you onto your right side, okay? Let's have you cross your arms. Using a draw sheet, shift the resident away from the direction of the roll toward the opposite side of the bed. On the count of three, you're, we're going to slide you over towards me. Are you ready? One, two, three. Assist the resident to cross their legs at the ankles if it's medically allowed. Put one knee on the bed if needed and get closer to the resident. Using the draw sheet or chuck, roll up the sheet towards the resident. Reaching across the resident, grip the sheet at the resident's shoulder and hip, pulling the resident over and towards you. The second transferring team member can assist by pushing the resident using a palms up posture. This is especially helpful with heavier resonants. Use a team, think team. Two are always better than one. When repositioning a resident, it is always best to get help. Using team techniques is safer for the caregiver and healthier for the resident. In the following segment, we will be demonstrating two-person assist techniques. Raise the bed to a safe working height. Always raise the head of the bed so the resident is in an upright position. This will eliminate much of the lifting of the upper torso. Remember, it is not how much you lift, but how you lift that can lead to injury. Explain steps of the move to the resident. Using team techniques, one caregiver reaches under the resident's neck and cups the resident's far shoulder in their hand. This allows the forearm to provide support the three, for the resident's the neck. The Explain the steps of the move to the resident. Two, three. Lift and shift the resident up while the second associate swings the resident's legs over the edge of the bed. Always allow for a count of one, two, and three before repositioning. Counting provides a smooth, safe start for the caregivers and a prompt for the resident. Lower the bed height so the resident's toes are touching the ground. When moving residents, it is mandatory to use a transfer or gate belt. Transfer belts fit snugly around the resident's waist to help provide your team with handholds. Two styles of belts are common in our environment. A traditional gate belt and a transfer walking belt commonly with handles. Either style is appropriate when used correctly. Secure the gate belt snugly around the resident's waist, leaving enough room to place your hands between the belt and the resident. Grip the belt with your inside hands and the back of the gripping hand to the resident. Be careful to grip the belt at the sides of the resident and not towards the back. This will keep your wrists in neutral and provide a safe, secure, and strong grip for the caregiver. When using a walking belt, secure the belt snugly around the resident's waist, being careful not to fasten the belt too loosely. A loose belt will allow the belt to ride up and chafe the resident. Position the belt so that the two vertical handles are positioned to the left and right side of the resident. Note that centering the buckle of the belt on the resident does not necessarily place the handles in the safest position for the caregiver. Position and lock the wheelchair in place at approximately a 45 degree angle and about a foot away from the bed. If the resident is compromised and has a weaker side, always place the wheelchair to the resident's stronger side. Move the resident to the edge of the bed. Using the gate transfer belt, ask the resident to tuck their feet under their knees and lean forward to assist with standing up. Always allow for a count of one, two, and three before transferring. 
counting provides a smooth, safe start for the caregivers and a prompt for the resident. Count of three will stand. One, two, three. And turn. Pivot towards the wheelchair, bend your knees, and lower the resident into the chair. Use a team. Think team. Two are always better than one. When repositioning a resident, it is always best to get help. Using team techniques is safer for the caregiver and healthier for the resident. In the following segment, we will be demonstrating two-person assist techniques. Toileting a resident is perhaps the most difficult transferring task we will perform. Many restrooms do not allow considerable room for movement, and the wheelchair is often in the way as we perform this transfer. It is best to consider this transfer as a two-step task. Remove the leg rest and wheel the resident into the restroom. Position the chair close to the toilet facing the grab bars. Lock the wheelchair brakes. The first step is to get the resident standing and secure on the grab bar. Ask the resident to scoot to the edge of the wheelchair and lean forward to grab the bars. With your hand on the gate transfer belt, ask the resident to stand on the count of one, two, and three while you lift and steady the resident on the grab bars. Stand on three, one, two, three. At this point, you can unlock the wheels and roll the wheelchair out of your way. After moving the wheelchair out of the way, the second step is to pivot the resident, lower their clothing, and set them on the toilet. Okay, side step. Remember, there are two caregivers. One can assist and steady the resident while the other moves the wheelchair. A two-step process allows for a safer, less crowded work environment. Use a team, think team. Two are always better than one. When repositioning a resident, it is always best to get help. Using team techniques is safer for the caregiver and healthier for the resident. In the following segment, we will be demonstrating two-person assist techniques. There are two methods to reposition a resident in a chair one of which is using two associates and the traditional fireman's lift technique. The second, safer method, is to use a sit-to-stand mechanical lift when available. Remember, it is always safer to use a mechanical lifting device than to lift or transfer a resident without one. If you choose to use the fireman's lift technique, it is important to use proper body mechanics safe postures, and to position the resident properly before repositioning. Ask the resident to lean forward to ease the process of placing a transfer belt. Brittany, we need to get you sitting up in your chair, okay? Let's lean forward. If need be, assist the resident forward. Move their feet and ankles so they are aligned behind the knees. If you feel the resident might slip forward and fall out of the chair, Place your foot in front of theirs on the floor. Attach the gate belt. With one person on each side of the resident, place your forward hand under the resident's thigh and your back hand on the gate transfer belt. Using your body weight, lift and shift the resident's towards the seat back, leading the shift with the resident's buttocks. Be careful to use a pulling back motion with your back hand instead of lifting on the gate belt. Lifting the gate belt can cause abrasions and bruising to the resident. Never attempt to reposition while the resident is sitting with their back on the backrest of the chair. They should always be upright or leaning forward during the repositioning. Are you ready? One, two, three. 
always allow for a count of 1, 2, and 3 before transferring. Counting provides a smooth, safe start for the caregivers and a prompt for the resident. It is important to always use safe techniques when repositioning a resident in a chair or wheelchair. Never lift a resident from under the arm to shift them back and never use their belt or pants waist to perform the repositioning. Use a team. Think team. Two are always better than one. When repositioning a resident, it is always best to get help. Using team techniques, it's safer for the caregiver and healthier for the resident. In the following segment, we will be demonstrating four-person assist techniques. During any transferring task, if a caregiver is required to lift more than 35 pounds of a resident's weight, the resident should be considered to be fully dependent and assistive devices should be used. If the resident has issues with hip, knee, or has skin compromise, care plan procedures should be incorporated. As societal demographics change, there is a greater potential for residents to be classified as bariatric. A bariatric individual can be defined as anyone regardless of age who has limitations in health and social care due to their weight, physical size, shape, width, health, mobility, tissue viability, and an environmental access. The Center for Disease Control defines an individual as bariatric whose weight is higher than what is considered as healthy for a given height and is described as overweight or obese. Always use your organization's Nursing. infection control protocols when handling a resident. How when preparing you? to assist or transfer the bariatric so resident, a leader must be identified when performing right. tasks with multiple call. caregivers. This will assure that the task is synchronized for increased safety of the health care provider and the resident. If the resident is partially able or not able to assist, at a minimum, three caregivers must be present to perform the task. During any resident transferring task, if a caregiver is required to lift more than 35 pounds of a resident's weight, the resident should be considered to be fully dependent and assistive devices should be used. Repositioning a bariatric resident in bed is a common task. Place a pillow between the resident's head and the headboard. Lay the pillow flat against the headboard. This provides a safety pillow and protects the resident from bumping their head during transfer. Raise the bed to a safe working height. Use at least four people and a draw sheet. A cloth incontinence pad or any combination of the two may also be used. Ask the resident to assist if possible by bending their knees. If the resident has lower body strength, they may assist in the transfer by pressing down with the legs. By raising the knees alone, you can reduce the weight of the transfer by as much as one third. Raising the knees reduces body weight that is moved on the mattress. Roll the draw sheet or pad snugly to the resident and grip with a palm down posture. This keeps your wrist in neutral and provides a strong grip. Ask the resident to place their arms and hands over their chest. Lean in the direction of the move. Lift and shift the resident up on the count of one, two, and three. Always allow for a count before repositioning. Counting provides a smooth, safe start for the caregivers and a prompt for the resident. Use your legs and body weight in the direction of the move. If the resident is classified to be bariatric, special considerations need to be applied to assisting the resident. If the resident is ambulatory, stand by for safety as needed. 
In most cases, if a bariatric resident is about to fall, there may be very little that the caregiver can do to prevent the fall. When ambulating in a resident's room, move items out of the way that could cause injury. If the resident begins to fall, try to protect the resident's head from striking any object on the floor. Call for another staff person at once. Follow the procedures described in the preceding module on transferring a resident found on the floor. Have the appropriate number of staff involved okay? when handling a bariatric Come resident. Be sure to use a sling designed for bariatric residents like when do. using the expanded capacity lift. If the resident is partially able or not able to assist, a bariatric right, ceiling lift yeah. or appropriate okay. floor-based lift must be used. You. Standard equipment is generally limited to 250 okay. to 350 pounds. Facilities should apply a sticker to all bariatric equipment with EC for expanded capacity and a space for the manufacturer's weight rated capacity for that particular equipment model. Use a team. Think team. Two are always better than one. When repositioning a resident, it is always best to get help. Using team techniques is safer for the caregiver and healthier for the resident. In the following segment, we will be demonstrating four-person assist techniques. During any transferring task, if a caregiver is required to lift more than 35 pounds of a resident's weight, the resident should be considered to be fully dependent and assistive devices should be used. If the resident has issues with hip, knee, or has skin compromise, care plan procedures should be incorporated. Occasionally, a resident will be found on the floor. It is essential that an injury assessment be conducted prior to attempting to move the resident. After the assessment and the resident is found to have suffered an injury, determine if basic first aid would be appropriate or if emergency medical services are needed. If the resident did not suffer an injury, use a floor-based lift that goes all the way down to the floor. At least two or more caregivers should assist with moving the resident up from the floor. Never attempt to hand lift a resident off the floor. This is too dangerous for everyone involved. There are many different types of hoists and slings. It is essential before using any equipment to have the proper training and to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Roll the person so that they are resting on their side. Put the folded sling behind the resident's back and roll them onto their back, locating the cradle over the resident. Let us know if you're hurting Be careful anything. not to lower the frame onto the resident. Let the lift move a little with the weight adjustment. Lower the cradle so that the sling loops reach the hooks of the lift. When both sides of the sling are attached to their respective sides of the cradle, raise the resident slowly. As you prepare to transfer the resident and remove the sling, explain the process to them. Move the resident into position over the bed, lower the resident onto the bed, and disconnect the sling from the lift. After you remove the sling, reposition the resident in bed. Employees and teams should apply this training immediately. We hope this training module is a helpful tool for you in the proper techniques when working with elders. We are confident it will transform you into stars. Thank you for the important work you do, and please be safe and take care.